Republican National Convention here in Milwaukee. So we have a few partners that are coming up, come out today to speak and answer any questions. We'll have members from the Secret Service, from the Milwaukee Police Department, the mayor of the city of Milwaukee, Catherine Johnson, members from FEMA, from FBI, from the Milwaukee Fire Department, and from the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office. We will begin with remarks and then move into a very brief Q&A. A couple of ground rules. This briefing is only about updates to the RNC security plan. The individuals speaking here today are not in a position to speak about the incident that occurred yesterday in Butler, Pennsylvania. We'd like to keep the conversation and the questions on topic in order to make the best use of your time. Questions about the incident that occurred yesterday in Butler, Pennsylvania should be directed to the Secret Services Press Office in Washington, D.C. A couple of ground rules. One question and one follow-up per outlet. Please name yourself on your outlet before you speak. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. So starting with the Secret Services Coordinator for the RNC, Audrey gibson Chichino. Good afternoon. My name is Audrey Gibson Chichino, and I'm the Secret Service's 2024 Republican National Convention Coordinator. The U.S. Secret Service, along with its federal, state, and local law enforcement and public safety partners, work together to design security plans for national special security events. They are designed to be adaptable based on the changing security landscape and most up-to-date intelligence from our partners. We've been working on the RNC security plan for more than a year and have been in constant coordination with our partners and the Republican National Committee. During our extensive planning efforts, we have accounted for various security scenarios that may arise and we are confident in the plan we have implemented for the Republican National Convention this week. That security plan will remain in place. While we cannot discuss the specifics, means and methods used for our protective operations, our protective me methodology for NSSEs is based on a layered approach that includes support from federal, state, and local law enforcement and public safety partners. We will continue to assess the security environment and adapt our security measures as appropriate. The Secret Service is working diligently with the Milwaukee Police Department, as well as all of our federal, state, and local partners to ensure a safe and secure convention for attendees, volunteers, and the City of Milwaukee. I'll now introduce the mayor of the city of Milwaukee, Mayor Cavalier Johnson. Thank you. Uh, several months ago, uh, folks in this room may recall uh, that I worked with a bipartisan group of individuals, both Republicans and Democrats, uh, with one goal in mind, to make sure we have a safe convention for everybody. Uh, these national special uh, security events, especially as they relate to the Republican National Convention and the Democratic National Convention, have been stuck at $50 million since 2004. Uh, obviously, things cost a little more than what they did in 2004, uh, and so via phone, via trips to Washington, D.C., and working with members of Congress on both sides of the aisle, uh, we were able to get a $25 million increase uh, to our security grant. Uh, I say all that to say that we take this matter very, very seriously. We take public safety very, very seriously. Uh, and I'm, I've been so pleased to work uh, in collaboration, not just with the United States uh, Secret Service, uh, but also with local law enforcement and public safety on the ground here. Uh, as was mentioned, uh, we're joined uh, by the chief of the Milwaukee Fire Department, uh, Aaron Litsky, who's been a great partner. Um, and we're also joined by the chief of Milwaukee Police Department, uh, Jeffrey Norman, who's been a great partner as well, uh, working to bring in law enforcement officers uh, from not just across the state of Wisconsin, but across uh, the United States to help out with public safety here. Uh, let me just reiterate uh, what was already said. This is an NSSC, a national uh, special security event. It is the highest designation that you can get for a security event uh, of its size and magnitude uh, in the United States. Uh, we have that designation uh, and we'll continue to work to make sure that public safety is tantamount uh, here uh, in this community. With that in mind, uh, I'll take uh, the opportunity to pass it over to the Chief of the Milwaukee Police Department, Chief Jeffrey Norman. Thank you, Mayor Johnson. 18 months. 18 months these plans have been put into place in regards to what we're going to have for this event. This is a collaboration between federal state, local, but beyond just from a law enforcement community, this is a collaboration between our elected leaders from both local, state, and also national. 
but also we have engaged community. We have workings with our community members in regards to ensuring the safety of this event. While we cannot talk about the operational plans, I can say from the CEO of the Milwaukee Police Department, this local police department here, I'm very comfortable in regards to the plans that we have made together. Not in silos, not where we're just kind of, you know, kind of going over Peru's actual planning together. As you can see in regards to my fire side, also from the county side in regards to the type of collaboration. The collaboration is real. As the mayor said, this is a national special security event. Can't get any higher than that in regards to that particular type of de designation. And so I just want to reassure not only our community, the greater community, those involved at the convention, but also in our city. We got this. We got this. Thank you. All right, with that, we're going to move into a brief Q&A. Please just place a hand up. We'll call on you. Please wait your turn. One question, one follow-up, meaning your name and outlet beforehand. And we'll get through as many as we can before we have to head out of here, okay? So we're going to start right here, down the left, uh, black t-shirt. Uh, Shimon Rokovets from uh, CNN. So my role in the Secret Service is the RNC coordinator, so that is my purview. Uh, any questions regarding uh, yesterday's event can be directed to our public affairs office out of D.C. Right, I understand that this is the first time that we are, anyone from the Secret Service uh, has publicly even spoken to the media about this. This happened. There was a press conference last night uh, that the Secret Service was not at. The state officials, the FBI was there, but yet the Secret Service is an absolute. So again, I'm the Secret Service, Secret Service's RNC coordinator, so I can speak to the RNC security planning. I'd refer any questions regarding yesterday's incident to our, our DC Public Affairs Office. Yes, ma'am. Mark Meredith with Fox News. I'm curious, obviously you don't want to talk about what happened in Pennsylvania. Have you had to change your security posture at all here? And if so, how? Is it a small percent change? Is it looking at over everything once again? And then a follow-up question would be, uh, just in terms of resources, I know you mentioned 18 months has been going into this. Do you feel like you had all the resources you needed to get to this point today, or do you feel like more than most of So as Mayor Johnson and Chief mentioned, this is a national special security event. That designation is the highest level of security designation that, that, that the federal government can uh, determine. So we are confident they, in these security plans that are in place for this event, and we're ready to go. Um, it's been an 18-month process. Uh, it's the, we've worked together over that 18 months to develop operational security plans for any and all aspects of security related to this event. But did it change within the last, and any change been made in the last 24? We're not anticipating any changes to our operational security plans for this event. I have not had any conversations regarding that, so I, I can't speak to that. Okay, you said that he had requested the Secret Service. Do you know if that request was actually made at this point? I have not had any conversations regarding that, so I can't speak to that. Is the Secret Service currently anticipating or currently planning to expand the perimeter? We're not anticipating any changes to our current security footprint or plan. Including, including allowing firearms into the soft room. Anything in the soft perimeter is outside of our uh, federal jurisdiction. But why should former President Trump, his family, and the convention goers have confidence in the U.S. Secret Service to secure this site here over the next four days after his life was nearly taken yesterday in Pennsylvania? So this event has been designated as a national special security event, which is the highest level of security for an event that can be designated by the government. So this is a whole-of-government approach. Uh, we've had an extensive uh, planning process. 
uh, to include many organizations uh, building out the operational security plans for uh, any and all aspects of security related to this event. Have you had the resources you need? Yes, we are fully uh, prepared and have a comprehensive security plan in place and we're ready to go. So we're confident in the current plan that we have. Uh, it is based off of uh, technical assessments, protective intelligence, and uh, it, it, we are continuously monitoring information related to, to the event. So we're confident in the plans that we have and we're moving forward with those plans. And why are you not concerned that people can carry firearms within that soft perimeter? So again, the Secret Service inner perimeter is our uh, primary jurisdiction. So I would defer any questions related to uh, outside of that zone to uh, my partners here on the stage. So one of the things I've understood in regards to the um, inner perimeter, it's the largest inner perimeter that has been part of the convention, to my understanding. Maybe I have to get that clarified. And so that is one important point to be able to understand in regards to what that level of security about what the inner perimeter looks like. In regards to the ability to uh, carry a firearm outside of the inner perimeter, again, our state law allows for uh, the particular uh, right to carry a firearm. Uh, we as a city cannot legislate out of that, and I don't know if our mayor wants to speak on that anymore in regards to that. And so for we, in regards to our law enforcement aspect, we have to operate within those guidelines. Unless it's something that is against state law, we have to respect Second Amendment right to carry your firearm, especially in regards to open carry or carrying concealed with your license. And so that is a, uh, you know, again, issue that we have to navigate. And uh, I will say this, and I've said this many times, uh, as that is your right, please exercise your right in a responsible manner. Please ensure that the behaviors that we would like to see for those with that responsibility aligns with that responsibility. The Market Police Department will not tolerate any particular behaviors outside of what is legally allowed in regards to that right. Thank you, uh, Chief, and just to reiterate what the Chief said, uh, local ordinances uh, in the state of Wisconsin do not supersede state law. Uh, Wisconsin is an open carry state, and therefore, uh, the city of Milwaukee and no other jurisdiction in this state can supersede uh, that uh, state law. Uh, folks should be aware, though, that proactively, before the uh, convention uh, gets started, uh, we did take action at the local level to ban items uh, that we could ban. So we used our authority already at the municipal level uh, to take that sort of security precaution um, that we were able to do. But in terms of banning uh, weapons uh, in the outer perimeter, uh, that is not within our purview because of state law. I'm the RNC coordinator, so I can only speak to the National Special Security event. Uh, the plans that we have in place uh, will continue as is, and we're confident in those plans. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michael Hensel. I'm the special agent in charge of the FBI for the state of Wisconsin. For your first question, um, the men and women of the FBI in the state of Wisconsin who work in our six offices, along with the assistance of our 56 field offices across the United States and our domestic and international federal partners, have worked over the last 18 months to take information in, intelligence in, evaluate that information, and then disseminate it to both our state and local partners to address any threats. Currently, there are no known articulated threats against the RNC or anyone visiting the RNC. Um, that's important because we also need the help of the public. If they see something during this time or feel uncomfortable with something, please let us know. Let your local law enforcement agencies know or the FBI. One in here, call the FBI. Not 
There have been no changes to our current uh, operational security plans for this event. Why not, given the fact that the former president was assassinated? So again, this event is designated as a national special security event, so it is an 18-month process that uh, involves uh, all levels of government uh, that are contributing to the operational security plans for this event. So we have an operational security plan that's built out for every area of responsibility related to uh, any and all aspects of security related to this event. <laughs> I can uh, just reiterate what I said uh, before in terms of what the city of Milwaukee has done. Our council, uh, in conjunction with me, passed uh, and signed a local ordinance to make sure that there's uh, more protection in the outer perimeter uh, as it relates to uh, officers from across the state of Wisconsin or uh, elsewhere coming in uh, to assist with public safety around this. I've deferred to Chief Moore. No change. I'm sorry. What does that look like on the ground? If, if the chief of police is saying there's no change, what does it look like on the ground if you're saying there's more protection in the other? So the, the ordinance that I'm referring to that uh, uh, we had passed uh, proactively at the at the local level, which is, by the way, the same ordinance, the same type of ordinance that we passed uh, in preparation for the Democratic National Convention when uh, it was to take place in Milwaukee in 2020 before becoming a mostly virtual event. Um, is an ordinance that does not allow individuals to bring in uh, into the outer perimeter uh, hard items like cans, like uh, bottles that are filled, uh, other hard objects that can be used as projectile weapons and things like that. So as I said, there's no, no specific or articulated threat to the RNC or any specific individual attending. Um, as you'd expect, after the event yesterday, we've seen an uptick in um, social media um, chatter, people talking about what happened. And we, as um, the lead for all intelligence matters related to the RNC, the FBI, we evaluate all of that to make sure that if it trends into criminal activity or threat-based information, we evaluate that and, again, disseminate it out to our federal and state partners for action. delegates, we've heard from visitors about a level of fear following what happened yesterday. Beyond the fact that you guys have planned for this for 18 months, what's your message to them about safety and security? So I'll take that on. Um, as we talk about these particular type of plans, especially in regards to what we've seen across the nation and what we're doing here, I don't know if we're comparing events in the same manner. What we've seen in regards to the past are, again, rallies or town halls. They don't receive the same level of support this event receives. And that's maybe hard to kind of wrap around in regards to the type of resources being invested in this particular community. Again, we cannot talk about the operations of it. But as a leader in this community, I've seen the work. We work together, again, not only from the standpoint of the federal level, but again, my local partners, and seeing that type of investment in regards to what is being done, we are planning as much as we can plan in regards to what we know and we're looking for what we don't know, but we are planned and actually ready with the resources. This is our community too. And looking at it from the standpoint of I want to make sure that they understand we see you, we understand this is something of a um, concern, and we are ensuring that we are going to put the proper effort, the proper type of communication, which is why in this particular forum is why we're having it, to ensure that there is a communication from this collective group 
We are working as hard as we can, around the clock, putting forth the effort that is necessary, not only for this RNC, but for our city. As the chief executive of our police department here, it is important that we are also understanding the concern in our city. So this is for those who are attending the RNC, but we are taking care of this city, period. Why isn't she here? Well, Have you talked with Director Cheadle? Why not? Will there be daily updates? How will we get 